What's up, guys? We're back. We're back. We're back. 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 We're back with another episode. Um, Molly, how are you feeling today? Excellent. You know why? Why? Because we got a new sparkling water to try. Oh my gosh, girl! I forgot you went up to go get that. I thought we weren't doing that. <laughs> I totally forgot you got up to go get that. It's been a yeah. long day, folks. It's been a long day. I know this is the start of your day. This is the end of our day. Yeah. And it's it's been this a is, long listen, it's been seventeen a long... day. <laughs> it's in been one a day. long week for us. Um, Molly and I have really, I actually, I would say a lot of people that are surround us have been going through it this week. So yes, um, yes, we are recording at night, but we are with you in the morning. We are waking and making. This is just when we could fit it into this shithole of a week. Bleep that yes. out. I get to cuss today because it's been a day. Yeah, I'll let you cuss today. This is this is a one time pass. Oh my gosh, I love that. It's been a week. It's been a week. So so it's Wednesday, guys. I don't know how your week's going so far, but ours has been not no our worries, favorite. Our week is great. <laughs> <laughs> We're hanging on literally by a thread. By, by a thread. By a thread. Um, but let's get... Oh, <laughs> shut up. I didn't even see it until then. She's dangling. She's a dangling participle in the, in the oh. viewfinder. Oh, I'm hanging um, literally a piece of thread in front of the camera for you listeners out there. <laughs> okay, Molly. So let's tell the people what we're drinking on today. Okay, so... My test for today, um, aha, uh-huh. get up. <laughs> Is that how you say it? I think so. Ah, uh-huh. ah, uh-huh. uh-huh. that's our seltzer for the day. Is ah, uh-huh. uh-huh. I don't know. It's blue bay pomegranate sparkling hey, babe, water. Can you pass me ah, ah? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. All right, you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Am I ready? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <she said. laughs> ah, yeah. Yes, queen. Okay, here we go. Give us some little fizzy bubbles ASMR really quick. Fizzy bubbles ASMR. Just hold it. Hold the can up to the thing. Let it. Let it. Let us listen. There's nothing. Oh, I can't hear it. Ooh, There's maybe nothing. she's flat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> yes. Okay. Slurp it up. <sighs> yeah. That face says maybe not. It has potential, you know? Yeah. Let me try it again. Could I drink this any louder? <laughs> I don't know, dude. You're smacking. She said, ASMR career. Who? That's, that's, she's taken off. It's okay. I wouldn't say I love it. Okay. But I'm, I'm not going to write it off yet. Okay. We're a non committal queen. I love that. Um, I am drinking for the viewers, I'm drinking Health Aid Kombucha. I, oh. um, I do have some new sparkling water flavors to try. I've really built up my stockpile. However, this, I just went to Target, and this is cold, and it just sounded so good. So I'm on the kombucha train today. Uh, this is my favorite flavor. It's the Pink Lady Apple. I am not a kombucha mm. person, but this is the kombucha that I like. So if you uh, need a kombucha rec, Pink Lady Apple, Health Aid Kombucha. I got, um, I got like three or four of them for Dylan and I because we really I've like never this, had kombucha. You've never had kombucha? I'm not even sure I know how to say the word properly. Kombucha! kombucha yeah no she's delicious i love her i'll have to try it sometime next yeah next escapade that we try we'll we'll go down that train but for now i'm on the sparkling water game i do not want to tell this story to you or our okay. listeners but i gotta tell it because it happened today okay tea. it happened today. i haven't seen yeah. you like all day which is part of why I my know. day has been bad last time we talked about on our podcast those news comments and i made the comment that you know, why does the news have to always pick? I think I use the word unique, but really what I was trying to say was the most country bumpkin person to put on the news when explaining stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. I said that. Guess what happened today? What, girl? Your girl got put on the news. Unironically put on the news? Like, I had to speak on the news. So, I go to work this morning, yeah. and luckily... You saw me. Luckily, I wore dress pants and kind of dressed a little nicer. I had planned to do like a very minimalistic look of makeup and wear jeans and my whatever shirt I could find for work because I just, this week has been stupid. Literally, this week has been awful. Yes. 
So I was like, you know what, Molly, maybe you'll be more positive if you wear your bell bottom pants that you just bought because I'm supporting that right now. Yeah. So thankfully I got ready. However, I didn't do a natural look. I said, Molly, you love makeup. That's your thing every day. That's your time. Put your makeup on. Yeah. So I did a hot pink lip and a hot pink eye ready to tackle and face this day like a Scorpio does, you know? Yes. And wouldn't you know it, hey, I need you to go be on the news and present something. Okay, great. I'm thinking present an item, present an object. No, I get there. They ask me questions on live news. And I'm thinking, I am now that country bumpkin that I talked about last week. You know what's so funny is that um, we, <laughs> as a co-worker, I did know that you were going to the news. But I thought, like you said, I thought you were just dropping something off at the news station. Like, I didn't think... I didn't even think twice about you being on or saying anything. Um, yeah. And then me and the other coworker who were left in the office, we just looked at each other and we're like, should we have, like, watched that? Should we have, like, tuned in to see what happened? <laughs> but Thanks. we just were so busy we didn't. And uh, how did it go? Like, what happened? It went fine, but I just was like, man, if one more thing, one more thing... <laughs> I'm going to lose it. It was great. It was fine. Uh, we were on with Lori Tucker. She's incredible. She's super sweet. So I really, I, I'll be honest with you. I, on my way there, was contemplating, how can I plug Wake and Make podcast? Do I oh wear a sticker gosh. on my shirt? But I, I didn't. I got too nervous because right when I got there, they're like, oh, we're going to ask you questions on the air. <laughs> oh, and by the way, you got to know your facts, girl. <laughs> Nobody told me that. Nobody did. Okay, so now that we have a local news celebrity in our midst, um, <laughs> Molly, do you care if I jump in while you start your makeup and explain to the little peeps at home uh, yes, what girl, we're doing? Tell us. Tell us. Tell us. I can't wait. Okay, so Molly so graciously let me um, do my makeup a little bit ahead of time today because I got a lot to a lot of talking to do, a lot of thinks and thoughts in this head. Um, but today we are doing looks based off of our zodiac signs. Woo! Woo! Yeah, girl. Um, so for those of you who didn't know, I'm an Aries and Molly is a Scorpio. Yes, right. Um, and for those of you who also also didn't know, I recently embarked in a little TikTok fame, a little viral video, yes. shall we say, um, about astrology. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So if you don't like astrology, that's cool. Um, I get it. Molly and I are very big on anything that is like an introspective tool for ourselves, like the Enneagram and, mm -hmm. um, Myers-Briggs, any personality tests, anything like that where we can group or categorize ourselves, we love it. We're in for it. Yeah, we love it. We love it. We love to see it. So um, just because I was TikTok famous and because I feel like with Zodiac signs, there are such good like color stories happening within each of the signs, we have decided to do uh, looks based off of that. I did... A more intense one yesterday during a practice run, but I decided to pair it very, very, very far down. Well, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about mine and your sign? I'm not an expert. I'm not like an astrologer. I don't pretend to be, but I do dabble and I love to read this stuff. So that's where I'm getting my information from is just a baseline knowledge of my own natal chart, which is where the stars were when you were born. So you have yeah. a whole natal chart. Um, most people refer to the things that you look at as called your big three, which is your sun sign, which is what Molly and I will be talking about today, your moon sign, and your rising sign. Molly, I'm not sure if you remember yours, but mine are my sun is Aries, my moon is Gemini, and my rising is Aquarius. If I remember correctly, I think you're a Scorpio sun with a Libra moon and a something on water. Rising. Oh, yeah. Something no, maybe you're a Libra rising. Maybe you are a Li I think you're a Libra rising. I don't know your moon. Pisces moon, maybe? Pisces and Scorpios are similar in certain ways. Yeah. So I think she's a Scorpio sun, Pisces moon, Libra rising. I'm pretty sure that's what we had determined. But all of that is to say that um, <laughs> the reason I kind of blew up on TikTok is because I was talking about how in the Zodiacs, there are grouped on elements. So like, Molly is a Scorpio, which is a water sign. I mm -hmm. am an Aries, which is a fire sign. And underneath each of those signs, obviously, there's 12 months in a year. There's 12 signs of the Zodiac. There are three 
zodiac signs under each element. And I was like, well, there's distinct crossover. Like I am an Aries, but I'm also a giant crybaby. So <laughs> I considered myself a watery fire sign. Whereas yeah. um, a Leo, I consider to be an earthy fire sign and a Sagittarius to be an airy fire sign. So I was just like explaining this whole theory and people really responded to it. And that's the reason I got TikTok famous. I so. love it. We've got yeah. another famous person on the potty. <laughs> yeah. So it's <laughs> almost at uh, 20. Oh, my gosh, you know me in numbers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally. 20,000? No. It's at 198.8K. Wow. Yeah. So that's like not as TikTok famous as I could be, but it's definitely more than any of my other videos. So um, That's great, though. That's really cool. Until we can find an astrologer and booker and have or him and have them read us to filth, I'm just going to stick to the sun signs because that's like where people pull in. In American culture, that's where they pull their main characteristics from. So okay. I'm going to start with you, Molly. I'm going to start with the Scorpio. Oh, I can't wait to hear about it, girl. Yes. I mainly, so like I said, I'm pulling from, actually, I don't know if I said this. So I'm pulling from Refinery29, which is like probably not the best um, astrological uh, resource. You can probably go to CoStar or um, I really like Sanctuary on Instagram. I, I love their stuff. Um, But I just wanted like a list of really basic strengths and weaknesses as a sun sign. So this was a really good list for me to pull from. As a Scorpio, your strengths are that you're resourceful, brave, passionate, stubborn, and a true friend. Your weaknesses are that, which is so funny because, okay, well, it's just really funny. Your weaknesses (laughs) are you're distrusting, jealous, secretive, and violent. Mm Mm-hmm. I, um, it's funny you say that because since we've been on this journey and you've been teaching me about some of this stuff, I heard this podcast and I can't even remember, but it talked about Scorpios, how we do everything very passionately. Like we, we're not a day-to-day task type of person. We like to find meaning in the things that we're doing, but it also talked about that we were loyal friends, but that we get really jealous And so this person was talking and she was like, so if you have a friend and she's talking with someone else, Scorpios are like, hold up, wait a minute. That's my friend. (laughs) Hold up. Wait a minute. (laughs) Wait a minute. So yeah, which is funny because I wouldn't have necessarily considered myself jealous, but I mean, when Carol is not talking to me and she's talking to somebody else, I'm like, hey, wait a minute, (laughs) girl. Wait a second. You got other friends. That's stupid. Yeah, so Scorpios, and I'll talk about, like, kind of my TikTok theory a little bit, I guess, because it's just, I think it's very interesting. I think spi- I think Scorpios are spicy water. I think they're fiery water. I mm. have never met, first of all, a Scorpio that I didn't vibe with. I seem to attract them for some reason. Um, and I then- attract Aries. <laughs> Did you just say that or do you actually? No, you don't. No, I'm just saying that. I don't know. (laughs) I do. Oh, also, I want to preface this. I want to go back and say, I do not judge you based off if like if I meet you and I'm like, when's your birthday? Like, I'm not judging you. I don't believe in that type. I'm just I just think it's a cool introspective tool, which I know I said in the beginning, but I want to like jump in and say like if I'm like, I don't vibe with cancers. I don't mean it that way. So don't take it that way. Like, I'm not going to meet you and say like, oh, she's a cancer. I hate her. Like, you know what I'm saying? No, no. so I'll uh, I'll do the other water signs now. And for each sign, I'll kind of go into my TikTok. And then I'll also try to correlate it with someone that we know. Um, and if Ooh, you yes. know someone in that age range, you let's shout them out too. Because we got some listeners I know that would love to be shouted out too. So another water sign is Pisces. And their strengths are they are compassionate, artistic, intuitive, gentle, wise, and musical. Their weaknesses are they are fearful overly trusting, sad, they desire to escape reality, and they can be in victa- They can be a victim or a martyr. So my mom's a Pisces. Yes, your mom's a Pisces. And an avid listener and uh, college bestie, Blair, is a what up, girl? Pisces too. And she would probably agree with all of those things, like 2AT. You said they were fearful. My mom is scared to death of snakes. Like, heart attack, <laughs> hit the floor, scared to death of snakes. Every Pisces I know, it's like a certain type of fearful. It's like, like they work themselves up so much about their fears. Like, literally, it's yeah. like an overworking of the system when they get yes. afraid. She um, would literally say that, like, her heart hurts. Like She's like, I can literally feel my heart beating out of my chest. That's how, like, <laughs> fearful she is of snakes. 
<laughs> and I, I'm like, I mom, just, it's fine. I'm not afraid of anything. Failure, I'm yes. I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> Failure um, and existential crisis is yes, of course. Everything else, <laughs> no. Okay, so that was Pisces. And then moving on, because I know we got 12 of these. We got a lot to do in a short amount of time. The next water sign is Cancer. Their strengths are that they're tenacious, highly imaginative, loyal, emotional, sympathetic, and persuasive. And their weaknesses are that they are moody, pessimistic, suspicious, manipulative, and insecure. Let me tell you, I, I, I struggle with cancers both, like, I don't know. I struggle with cancers both male and female that I have met. And what, um, give us the birth months for those? End of June, beginning of July. My nephew, I guess, is technically a cancer, but some of those are him. I wouldn't, I don't know that all of them I've, I've noticed at least. Scorpio is fiery water. And I think that Pisces is airy water. Like I don't see Pisces as, I know a lot of people see Pisces as also manipulative. Um, but I think that water signs in general are told they are manipulative because they are so highly emotional and they drag people into their emotions that Mm. they get put that manipulative label on them when really you just might be misunderstanding their emotions. Um, however, the cancers I have met, I say that they're earthy water, but not in the way that the earth sign that I think is watery (laughs) is watery. I just see them as like very swampy, very draining people. Let's do, let's round out the fire sign since I'm a fire sign. So Aries, we went, oh, we haven't done my strengths and weaknesses. So my strengths are courageous, determined, confident, enthusiastic, optimistic, honest, and passionate. Yeah. My weaknesses are that I am, I'm impatient, moody, short-tempered, impulsive, and aggressive. Yep. Yep. Checks out. 100%. Nailed it. <laughs> you, I, I'm glad you know this. Great. <laughs> um, I said that uh, Aries are the watery fire sign because they are big babies. And it's a theory that in astrology is actually like pretty supported because we are technically the first zodiac in the zodiac sign, which I know that we are end of March, beginning of April, but that's actually technically the first zodiac sign. So they say that we're like an immature underdeveloped sign. So we're just like giant fire babies that like yell and act very impulsively. Fire babies. (laughs) Like literally. So uh, that is why we get labeled. And, And I'm a very impulsive and impatient person. Molly can attest to that um but we're also very passionate which i think works to my benefit in work and other areas of life so oh yeah um the other fire signs are leo which is uh their strengths are that they are creative passionate generous warm-hearted cheerful and humorous their weaknesses are that they are arrogant stubborn self-centered lazy and inflexible so we actually had a guest who i know is a leo uh on our podcast who elisa Oh, yeah. Yeah. Elisa is a Leo. And uh, I think that she is such the epitome of the positives of a Leo because she's so creative and she does so, yes. so much. And I said that Leo was the earthy uh, fire sign, mainly because I don't see them like pop off and overreact as much as uh, Sagittarius and Aries. Like they're definitely more stable and can kind of hold their emotions more than most other fire signs that, that tend to pop off. I could see that about her. She gave me that vibe for sure. Yeah. So the next fire sign we've got is a Sagittarius. Uh, Their strengths are that they're generous, idealistic, and they have a great sense of humor. Their weaknesses are that they promise more than they can deliver. They're very impatient, will say anything, no matter how undiplomatic. One that I know is my friend Anna. I know she's also a listener uh, to the podcast. (laughs) They are also the Thanksgiving babies. So we work with uh, their end of November, beginning of December. So... um, we are, uh, we know a couple of them and work with a couple of them. And I said that they are the airy fire sign in my TikTok because they're flighty. Like all of that is saying, like they promise where they can deliver. They're kind of flighty. They're kind of all over the place, which Anna would be the first to admit like, yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I could, see, yeah, I could see that. I mean, not for Anna. I mean, just, I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry, gotta... Anna girl. And I'm not trying to call you out. No, she day. said just... you've been outed right here. <laughs> She's like, that girl Molly that you co-host with, she's out. a bitch. 
<laughs> I don't like her. <laughs> hey, they say anything, no matter how undiplomatic. So, <laughs> um, okay. So the next one that we're gonna go through, I say we go through the Earth signs. We are gonna do the Earth signs, and I'm gonna start with Taurus. Their strengths are they are reliable, patient, practical, devoted, responsible, st- and stable. Their weaknesses nice. are that they are stubborn, possessive, and uncompromising. Do you know any Tauruses that I feel like I know so many Tauruses? They are the back half of April and the beginning of May. That would be my dad. Yep. My dad's a Taurus, too. That's so funny. Yeah. And so is um, my cousin, Brittany. I would say that dad is definitely, he's a workaholic. So I would say he's pretty, you know, devoted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he is also very stubborn, which yeah. I get it. I get it, too. I'm a Scorpio. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very stubborn. So now you know. <laughs> and we come full circle, y'all. And we've come full circle. Uh, the yes. circle of life. <laughs> And it tells your zodiac. <laughs> yes, oh, girl. Um, so, uh, yes, I described the Tauruses that I know as watery earth, but not like a cancer, not like swampy. They are like a, a mountain stream, like a Fiji water, bougie. Like most Tauruses yeah. I know are pretty dang bougie. They like the finer. It's like the finer things club from the office. And then moving on to the next earth sign, we're going to hit on Molly's husband, Joey, Virgo. Jojo. Their strengths are that they're loyal, analytical, kind, hardworking, and practical. Their weaknesses are they are shy, they worry, they're overly critical of their self and others, and they're all, all work, no play. I agree with most of that. <laughs> uh, we have another regular <laughs> listener. My friend Emily is a also a Virgo, and I think she would probably agree with that. Maybe not shy. She's definitely not shy, but she's all work, no play. But when she do play... Uh, most Virgos I know love the phrase work hard, play hard. So yes, that's Virgos. And I said Virgos were actually the fiery earth sign, which a lot of people fought me in the comments of the TikTok um, because they uh, they just were wild and out in the comments about that. They were like, Virgos, uh, they were like, Virgos aren't the fiery earth sign like blah, blah, blah is. And I was like, mm, no, you're wrong on that. Because the thing about Virgos is when you're wrong, they're going to tell you that you're wrong. If you're <laughs> wrong, a Taurus and a Capricorn are not going to tell you that you're wrong. They're going to look at you and they're going to hold that against you and know that you're doing it the wrong way and not their way. But they're not going to like directly be like, you're doing that wrong. Let me do it. Like a Virgo is going to jump in and say like, you're doing that wrong. Let me do it. (laughs) And then we're going to get to my husband who the last earth sign is Capricorn. They are strengths are they're responsible, disciplined, self-controlled and good managers. Their weaknesses are they are know-it-all. They are unforgiving. They're condescending and they always expect the worst. So. Oh, Okay. That's pretty much Dylan to a T. He's the manager of the house. Uh, I wouldn't yeah. say, like, unforgiving is a little bit hard. He definitely forgives, but, but that's a little, that's a harsh word. <laughs> but I said that Capricorns were the airy earth sign because every Capricorn that I meet is, like, very cerebral. Like, they are very, like, that's the best word I can think to describe them. One of my friends, Britt, uh, he is a Capricorn. Dylan's a Capricorn. One of our coworkers is a Capricorn. And they just, I don't know, they just give me, like most Capricorns I meet give me just like smart boss babe energy. I don't know why. Same for Dylan. Dylan gives me boss babe energy too. So that was the earth signs. This is why I saved the air signs for last is because first of all, my moon and my rising are both air signs. And I got the most hate on my air sign video because I started with like one thing and then I like explain the others. And so they all have a decent amount of views, whatever. Yeah. The arguing in the bottom of that video is insane. Like not one air sign agrees with anything that I said, like at all. So this is, I want to preface this, that this is how I see it. So I'm going to start with Gemini, which I think is the fiery air sign because I love Geminis and I like your niece Lila is a Gemini and she, mm, they're wild. I love it. I live Mm -hmm. for Gemini's wildness. So um, their strengths are they are gentle, affectionate, curious, adaptable, able to learn quickly, and they exchange ideas quickly. Their weaknesses are they are nervous, inconsistent, and indecisive. The two that I am just sick of on TikTok are Libra and Aquarius. And I said, which you might disagree with me now that I think about it, I said that Libras were the earthy air sign because let me read their traits. They are cooperative, diplomatic, gracious, fair-minded, and social. Their weaknesses are they're indecisive, they avoid confrontation, and they will carry a grudge, and they tend towards self-pity. I don't know that I agree with all those. I wouldn't say that about my sister, some of those things. 
Yeah, I I know a couple Libras. My sister is also a Libra. If that's so funny that your dad's a Taurus and your sister's a Libra, my dad's. Oh a Oh my gosh, my girl! I said that they're the earthy air sign, and people in the comments are like, "No, Libras are so much more emotionally intelligent than Aquarius." As we're definitely the watery air sign, and I was like, "Okay, sis, like I need y'all to stop yelling at me because I really don't know what I'm talking about. I was just having fun. I was just I'm yeah. just having fun." Calm um, down. Sit down. Exactly. I was like, sit down. I don't know. Like, fine. Be the watery air sign. I don't care. Like, whatever. <laughs> the reason I said earth sign specifically. Ow, I just stabbed myself with my tweezers because I got really heated. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> think that because literally the Libra's zodiac image, like, it is a, a scale. Like, it is an actual scale of balance, of justice. Yes. Libras are very diplomatic. Like, I don't know a single Libra. At, and these are the two things that I notice about Libras. And you can tell me if your sister's this way or not. They are okay. very diplomatic and they are very indecisive. They do not, like, they they do a great job of weighing each side of an argument and then acting on it. Which is why people see them as indecisive is because they weigh their options very carefully and take a, a minute to do it. What is your sister like? She's quick to make a decision. Like she, I mean, I think she is. She seems to come up like when I'm thinking about different things. Well, my friend Sarah is also a Libra sign and she comes up with decisions quickly, but she's there. She's thought them through. Like, like her reasoning mm. is like, you cannot sway them from their reasoning of like why they did that. No, I agree with that with her. Yeah. yeah so what I mean is like when they make a decision, they've thought it all the way through. It's why they're the scales of justice. Like that's literally why they are that yeah. sign and the zodiac sign. So like whenever they make a decision, they've thought it all the way through, girl. They're not very impulsive people. I think Aquariuses are little special snowflakes. And I can say that because I'm a rising Aquarius. So their strengths are they are progressive, original, independent, and humanitarian. Their weaknesses are they run from emotional expression. They are temperamental uncompromising and aloof. So when I said water sign, I didn't mean like they're just all over the place emotional. And I even said this in my description. I said, I see Aquarius as, as the watery air, like mist, like they're there yeah. and then they're not like they yeah. are aloof. You can't really pin them down at all. They like mist morning mist is such a like unique thing, you know, and they want to be special and different and only around for a little bit, you know, and people yes. took it as I was saying that Aquarians are like some emotional wreck and that's like not it at all. That's not it at all. They are not. I understand they're not emotional people, but they yeah. are special snowflakes. They do want to be the different ones. Yeah. So that's a brief overview of characteristics that, uh, thanks to Refinery29 for doing all of my research for me. <laughs> thanks, Refinery. Thank you, girl. So for those of you listening at home, I did a really big black wing with a simple red line across it. And Molly did red liner. I was going to do black on top, but I ended up changing my mind. So it's a red. It's uh, my waterline is black. But other than that, just a little She said T. She changed wing. her mind, everyone. Leave her alone about it. I've really been enjoying learning and going through this stuff with you because I've never really looked into it much, but whether it's the zodiac signs or, you know, personality type things like mm -hmm. Enneagram or the big five or whatever, it always just helps me kind of reflect on myself and be like, okay, yes. And it helps me put it into words where I might not have been able to describe, describe myself before. Yes, I now exactly. can. Let's, let's sing a little jingle to transition us into the next section that we thought about today that we haven't had in a minute. Are you ready? Ready? Yes. Takes. Takes. That's back. We back and better than ever with a hot take. <laughs> We're doing hot takes, and guess what, guys? I'm not giving it a hot take today because it almost caused me and Caroline to divorce. So. We still fight about that to this day. So, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we've drug other people into that too, but no, well, my yeah. hot take, um, is it's not really a hot take. It's just like, I need to voice some frustration and it's about my wedding because we're gearing up uh -oh. for the reception. We're headed back into the big day. Why the hell is it so hard to get people to fill out an online RSVP? I need to know why it's so hard. I would say that my parents are terrible RSVP type people. Yeah. They don't RSVP, but they will show up. 
But like, I'm talking like youngins, Molly. I'm youngins. here's the thing is I'm a very considerate um a host, I would say. I love event planning. Everyone knows this about me. We're you probably do. gonna talk about just everyone buckle in. We're probably gonna talk about my wedding an infinite more amount of times on this podcast. Like it's coming up, <laughs> it's on my mind, whatever. I consider myself a very considerate host because I love event planning. And so I understand that not everyone likes an email, which is kind of we've spent a lot on postage. But we had leftover custom stamps. So I went through and I was like, who's not opening these emails? Who's not getting them? Who doesn't have an email? And I still did another round of paper invites for those people. Wow. So, yeah. So I don't understand why the youngins who I didn't account for, I sent you an email with a direct link to the RSVP thing. Why the heck did you not reply? Why are you not RSVPing to me? Especially through email. I know you can literally go like beep, beep, and you're done. It's two clicks. It's two clicks to get there. The hot take is it is a bad wedding etiquette to not RSVP. I think it needs to be here. Here's, let's escalate this hot take a little bit more because I'm feeling spicy about it. I think people should be shamed for RSVPing late or delayed. I think that you should be able to be called out and be like, hey, Let's go. Let's hurry this up. Just, like, do it. You know the bride is stressing out. Like, just do it. You RSVP'd late, so there's no plate for you. There's no plate for you. At all. Sorry. In the box, I said, if you do not fill out, like, because my little Wix form, it has, like, a shadow where you can, like, see it before you pre-fill out the form. I said, if you do not fill out your plus one here, there will not be a seat for them. Like, I'm sorry. I don't feel like I'm being a bridezilla on that either. I just think it's good etiquette to, like... Do your and plus in, ones and in figure fact, it out. When I filled out yours, I was like, okay, well, okay, I'm going to fill this out. I put my name in. And before I got to the end, I was like, I wonder how I put in my plus one or like, she's going to need to know his name because I knew that you were having play settings and certain things mm-hmm. like that. Like, so in my head, I already was questioning it. And then you set it up perfect. Like put your plus one here if they're coming. Yeah. 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 And the other thing is I just, oh my gosh, I am a, I'm a worrier. I I voice my opinions like very loudly to you when I'm worrying and I'm kind of worrying because I, like I said, I have some paper invites, but I don't have a ton of postage left. I'm not going out and buying more postage. I spent $200 on stamps when I first started my wedding for this postage. Like I'm not doing any more. That's it. Yeah. Um, So I'm kind of worried that I've gone this like paperless email route, which was much cheaper. Like I still spent a little bit more to do that, but I didn't go like crazy with it. I'm a little bit worried since it's not a physical object in front of people that it's going to like maybe they saw the email and they're like, oh shit, like I got to talk to my wife and make plans or I got to talk to my husband and book a hotel room because there are people from out of town. I'm worried that it's going to slip in their inbox and they're going to forget. Are people just like going to show up at my wedding? I'm not going to have them on the list. Because they opened it and then they decided to come and they didn't fill out the website. I'm just saying, just like wearing white to a wedding, RSVP etiquette should be shamed more. Okay, we should shame it more. I actually sent out paper invitations and I I hardly got any back. So I went through the list and I'm like, I know this person's coming. I know this person will come. But there were still people that I invited that didn't RSVP that did show up. And then there were people that did RSVP that didn't come. And so I think using that 30% rule is pretty good. But I'm wondering how that stands with email invitations, though. Can you text these people? Because you said some of them were young. Can you text and be like, hey, did you get my email? I can, but guess what? This is why it's a hot take. I just think you should just do it. Like, yes, eventually... When, when when June 5th rolls around, I want everyone who's listening to just, like, say a prayer for me because June 5th <laughs> is the last day for RSVPs. So on that last day, of course, I'll be texting people to say, like, are you coming? Are you not? Like, this is the last day to RSVP. I'll also put a probably a blast post on Facebook that's, like, if you need to RSVP, do it today's last day or you will not have a seat at the wedding. Like, I just, I don't yeah. know, dude. Like, I feel like that should be able to be said. And I'm a pretty passive person, so, like, I don't like... You know me. I don't like confrontation. But, like, about these well, RSVPs, I'm about to be up in someone's grill. So I'm the planning thing. to feed you. <laughs> if they don't RSVP, then obviously you don't have a place setting for them. So let them feel awkward when they show up and they don't have a place setting. Well, you T- didn't RSVP. She's not a mind reader, people. Oh, that reminds me. I have to read what my friend Josh said about the podcast today. Uh, uh, Josh. Josh. My friend Josh from college. He is the best. First of all, love that he's listening to it because it literally has nothing to do in his realm of existence as a man. I love this. Josh, we um, love you, man. (laughs) He said this 
He sent me a screenshot of the latest episode, and he said, this feels like when you stay up really late and everything hits your funny bone just right. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, I love that description of our podcast so much. Oh, that's great. See, that's the one thing I love about our podcast. I know that we're called Wake and Make, and obviously we all do something with makeup or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I like to, I like our, you know, conversations we get into because it lets, lets you guys get to know who me and Carol are and... You see how crazy we are. I mean, I do really like our makeup looks today, but... That's- yeah, I was going to talk about mine because mine is a homemade one. So I went, I wanted to do a red eyeliner. I went to the store to Molly, buy... shut up. <laughs> red eyeliner, and they did not have any. And I'm like, okay, I could use lip liner. But as we all probably know, people with hooded eyes, it's probably not going to go well for us. So I bought... You sneaky little devil. <laughs> So I bought some, just a little travel size because I don't use the eye primer in general, but it's a, it's a Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion. I took a little bit of that, put it on my hand and took the powdered eyeshadow and used like an angle brush. And that's how I made my eyeliner for today. You dirty little devil. You've been sitting on this secret the entire episode. Yes. I was I was worried because I was like, man, I feel like we're about to wrap up this episode. And I haven't even given my top, my hot secret. And my hot secret. Girl, oh my gosh. That is such a good tip, dude. I yeah. love that. So if there's a color you can't find... Get you some primer, mix it up. I love that because I really needed orange yesterday. Should we wrap it up? <laughs> I can't even deal with her. Uh, was that impulsive? I don't know. Uh, no, that was the violent side. <laughs> we should we should start this thing where every time we do that exit, it's a it's a new. So like we can have a little jazzy. Thank you, man. That's more like scat. <laughs> and then like a rap. Thank you, man. Oh, that's kind of like a DJ. That's not really like a. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was with it. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, we definitely should start that. I like that yeah. trend. You never know what we might come out with. Yeah, I mean, you I'm never know. Here, I'm going to start practicing my Frank Sinatra version of Wham Bam, Thank You, Man. Okay, Wham. well, guys. Bam, thank you, man. <laughs> well, she practices. Um, <laughs> we are Wake and Make Pod on TikTok and Twitter and Instagram. You can find us there. We post a bunch of nothing uh, except fun stuff. So check us out. If you want us to try something, go ahead and send it to our Gmail at wakeandmakepod at gmail.com. If you're a sponsor, we would love if you would slip in those DMs even faster. Um, so with that, Molly, do you feel practiced and ready for our outro? I think I do. Are you okay? Ready? Take it away, sis. Oh, I'm bad. Thank you, man. Yes. <laughs> we will see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.